Furious Sam The First Encounter is a brutally hardcore first person shooter developed by Crow Team in the year 2001. It was released amidst a flurry of excellent and iconic shooting games and still manages to earn its place amongst these ranks. To this day it still stands up as being one of the most challenging arena shooters ever made and is a great example of how unrelenting FPS games used to be. In the first encounter, you take on the role of Sam Sirius Stone, a protagonist in a similar vein to someone like Duke Nukem, with a serious penchant for one-liners, big guns, and kicking all manner of ass. I'm over here, you stupid headless freaks. Sometime in the future, as mankind began exploring the galaxy, we apparently came into contact with some nasty aliens, led by a supreme being called Mental, who soon reached Earth and began wiping out mankind. It's at this point that Sam heads back in time to ancient Egypt to recover some strange artifacts which are supposed to help stop the alien invasion. Now this Egyptian motif forms the central theme for the entire game and you'll be navigating all sorts of environments as you move level to level, killing swarms of constantly spawning enemies. Brought to life by the power of the Sirius engine which at the time seemed like downright black magic for the amount of things it could achieve in game. Compared to other shooting games of the time that featured somewhat linear corridors with fixed enemy placements, Serious Sam instead uses large open arenas that spawn in legions of bad guys when you reach a certain point or perform a certain action, collecting items, flipping switches being the most common. Once you kill the dozen or so enemies that spawn in, you move to the next area and do it all over again. Something that made Serious Sam so memorable is its enemy roster and the fact that almost every single enemy is different from the rest. The most basic you'll encounter are these headless grunts called the Beheaded that have varying methods of attack, with the Kamikaze being the most iconic. Oh, yourself. The Kamikazes are guys that run straight for you, holding explosives in each hand and screaming loudly before blowing the fuck up if they get close enough. These guys will almost always take precedence over every other single enemy in the nearby vicinity and are great at keeping you on your toes and also totally changing the shift of a gunfight at any given moment. Another you'll frequently encounter are the clears. These are weird looking skeletons that hurl chain balls from a distance and leap quickly towards you for a damaging melee attack when in closer range. One of the most common enemies, they're also one of the most annoying, able to take off huge chunks of health in a single hit and they're rarely encountered one at a time. You'll also go up against flying harpies, golems made from molten lava, and deadly electric eels in some of the game's underwater sections. The only enemies I flat out do not like are the arachnoids and the reptiloids. The arachnoids are large scorpions with hit scanning miniguns that can just fire on you uninterrupted until you can find them and hit back. They're quite often put in out of the way places, like on the other side of the map, for instance, as a cheap way of making certain areas more difficult. Reptiloids, on the other hand, throw homing fireballs that deal tremendous damage, and like the arachnoids, these assholes are often put in hard to reach places, where they can easily attack you without reprieve. Unlike the other enemies, these guys are just total pricks, and their damage styles and output is total bullshit. Most of the other enemies are still a royal pain in the ass to be sure, but the amount of damage they can dish out can be minimized, as long as you learn their attack styles and can react quickly enough when they telegraph certain attacks. And that's really one of the biggest skills to learn with Serious Sam. If you just kind of go in willy-nilly shooting at whatever's in front of you without a second thought, you're going to have a bad time. Assessing the threat and taking enemies out accordingly is most important. Choosing the right weapon for the job is going to play a big part in this. Sam has been given a huge lineup of guns to kill things with. You initially start off with a revolver before quickly getting your hands on a shotgun. And from there the progression of weapons usually occurs with each new level from a Tommy gun and minigun to rocket and grenade launchers through to laser guns. Each weapon works for better or worse in certain situations. Rocket launchers are great from a distance, but as soon as enemies start closing in, you'll want to switch to something like the minigun to avoid taking too much splash damage. A weapon like the laser gun is great at killing some of the game's tougher enemies, but you might want to use something lighter against weaker enemies like the beheaded, as it would be more of a waste of ammo than anything else. After a couple of hours of playtime, you'll find yourself subconsciously switching between weapons on the fly. The game is constantly forcing you to make a decision on the current situation, swapping weapons back and forth. And the amount of depth to the shooting makes modern FPS games seem elementary by comparison. It should be said that Serious Sam is a very, very hard game. Even on the default setting, this game will kick your ass. 
You can never really afford to be standing still during combat. In fact, if you're not constantly circle strafing with your finger firmly pressed on the left mouse button, then you're playing the game wrong. The game isn't too hard to begin with. In fact, the first few levels are quite easy, but then about four levels in, the difficulty takes a huge spike and never really dwindles for the rest of the campaign. It's something that I can see catching newbies off guard and really leaving a bad taste in their mouth. I also get the vibe that certain areas were designed with co-op in mind as opposed to solo play. There's a couple of spots where they literally spawn in a hundred enemies at once and it's just flat out overwhelming. Ammo and health isn't stocked up enough during these moments and it's more than a little frustrating. But it does help in making it all the more satisfying when you manage to scrape on by. In 2002, Crow Team followed up on the success of the first encounter with an expansion pack named The Second Encounter. Now, the second encounter takes place after the events of the first encounter, obviously, and includes a whole new set of levels, new enemy types, as well as giving Sam a new snipe rifle, flamethrower, and a chainsaw to play around with. Also, whereas the first encounter really only had one theme, the second encounter has three, a sort of Aztec, Middle Eastern, and finally a European motif. The second encounter is considerably longer and more difficult than the first encounter, with about the same amount of levels, though these levels are a lot longer in general. Enemy placements still work around spawning them into a particular area, though their numbers have been greatly increased. Someone at Crow Team was also quite fond of sadistically putting the arachnoids and reptiloids on towers or buildings right on the edge of the map, which once again just basically gives them free reign to pummel you with attacks while you're way too busy dealing with enemies on the ground. And again, this is an extremely cheap way of making some of the outside areas tougher, and as a result, the game just feels unfairly tricky at times. The second encounter also introduces power-ups, which affect Sam's movement speed and damage output. They're not entirely groundbreaking, though they can help with certain areas. Overall, though, this is just as good, if not better, than the first encounter, and the only thing holding it back is the downright cheap nature of some of the level design. It just seems like Crow Team literally tried to cram as much shit into the levels as possible to see what they could get away with, and it feels a little bit over the top at times. For instance, they went way, way overboard on the kamikaze enemies. It seems they've packed dozens of these guys into almost every single level, whereas before you'd only encounter them every now and then. Once again, this difficulty stems from the fact that these areas seem more designed around co-op than solo play, which would be fine and dandy if the online scene wasn't so dead. The other problem with these games is that they can just be a little bit relentless at times. Killing hundreds of bad guys in a single level is all well and good, but it can be a bit tiresome. It's not the type of game you can play for long stretches, as the constant strain on your eyes and reflexes can be a bit draining. Also, it gets a bit boring and predictable that every time, knowing that as soon as you grab that ammo pack or health power up, that a bunch of dickheads are going to spawn in meters away from you. I find I usually have to take a break after almost every level and just get my head back together. They're still both very appealing games, however, and it's surprising just how well the graphics engine holds up, considering it's over a decade old now. When there's a hundred dudes swarming your screen and things are blowing up all over the place, it still looks really good. Yeah, it's all fun and games until somebody loses an eye. In 2009, Crow Team released the High Definition remakes for both the first and the second encounter. These are probably the single best high definition remakes ever made and keep the gameplay intact in every single way. I mean, I do see the charm in the visuals from the older games, but you can't deny they've done a fantastic job updating them for the remake. And honestly, if I had to pick between the two, I'd probably go for the HD version. As much as Serious Sam is a classic in its own right, I'd have to say that it's not really a game that's for everyone. Sure, it's addictive and it's fun to play, but I think you'll find the vast majority of people who enjoy it are the same people who played it when it was first released. In regards to younger gamers, I think its style and gameplay will come across as a bit archaic. But it still does stand the test of time as one of the single most hardcore shooting games ever made. And on the highest difficulty setting, it would give even the most seasoned FPS fan a serious run for their money. You see what I did there? The entire franchise is readily available online. If you're in the mood for a game that will kick the living shit out of you as much as you will it, then look no further.